Okay, today we're going to talk about IPFS. We're just going to do a basic introduction to IPFS. Um, let's go to our browser and uh, just type IPFS and see what comes up. Um, what we're interested in is IPFS is the distributed web. We'll click on this link. It takes us to their website. First thing we're going to do is try to install um, it. Uh, so let's click on Try It. And today I'm working on my Macintosh. And so uh, I think we'll go here to install IPFS now. Here's the different versions. I'm going to download this Mac OS X 64-bit. And OK, so we've downloaded it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it. And you can see I've downloaded it several times. Um, in my download folder, there's only one file that we're concerned with right now, and that's this IPFS file. What we want to do is copy that to our to a place in our appropriate place in our path so that we can just run that and have it work. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to move over here to um, to the root of my directory and I'm going to go into user local user bin user local bin, excuse me. I'm going to put this right in here. I'm going to paste that right in there. And you can see I've already got one in there. Um, we'll replace it. So now I've got the IPFS uh, application in my user local bin, which is part of my path. So now I should be able to go to my command prompt, and if I say, like, which IPFS, that will kind of tell me. You can see that it finds it in user local bin IPFS. So when I type IPFS, um, there's some, uh, like, I'll type IPFS version, which is a will tell me what version it is. And sure enough, it's 0.4.3. Um, we're good there. Um, the next thing that I want to do is initialize IPFS. IPFS is, is a the, called the interplanetary file system. It's used to save files um, that can be shared globally. Um, so, um, to, to, so that IPFS can set up its what they call the local repo, um, I need to go IPFS and then uh, init. And what that will do, it will go in and, and uh, create a file structure uh, on your computer and um, give you what's called your peer identity. And you can see this is your peer identity right here. It's a great big long, it's a hash basically, or a multi-hash. And so um, that's your identity on this global network right now. Now keep in mind, at this point, we are not exposed to the global IPFS network at this point. We'll learn how to do that later. Um, basically, we're just working locally, and no one can see our computer, and, and there's not really any security risk at this point. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting right here, we can run this command right here. When you do the init, basically, uh, the, the init uh, uh, pins a file to your local IPF, IPFS uh, repo. And so um, we can kind of go do this IPFS cat, and it will show us this file. Okay, so this file is on your computer. It was put there when we typed IPFS in it. Another thing that um, is interesting is um, exactly what happened here. And uh, maybe we'll just to, as a, as a visualization, we'll go into our, our finder and we'll um, look at what it did. What did IPFS just do to us? So what you'll find is that this IPFS directory was created. And you'll see some directories one called blocks and a file called config and then the data store and version. Okay, it it put this structure here. This data this folder needs to be in a place where you have plenty of, of data, plenty of space because every file that you add, or or view, or look at or pull up on IPFS is going to end up in here. So um, that's kind of what it does, and we can kind of see that here. Um, ls, oops, excuse me. Ls uh, .ipfs. So you can see those those folders there. I can kind of cd into it, and um, I could also uh, do a, a directory utility on it, and we do an sh, and kind of see how big it is. You'll find this. You'll see it's not very big. Um, so there's like 120k in there. Okay. So let's. Uh, um, the reason. 
the, the point of IPFS is for storing files. Let's uh, take, do a couple little things locally here on our own computer, um, just with some commands. Let's create some files. Um, I created a folder called IPFS. I'm just going to uh, cd into it. You should create one too. Create a folder called IPFS, and right now I've got nothing in there. We're going to create a file right here at the command line, so we have a file in that IPFS folder. And this is, has nothing to do with the IPFS program. This is just, I'm just going to use uh, the commands to create a file right here on my own computer. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can say echo, and I can type some text, and we'll just type hello world. And I can pipe that to a file called toast.txt. So when I do this, now I have a file called toast. Okay, and this has nothing to do with IPFS. This is just a Mac, the Mac OS. <clears throat> now, what I can also do now is I can cat toast.txt. And so, sure enough, I didn't type hello world, I typed hello hello. Well, that was kind of dumb. So, um, so, I can use the echo command and pipe it to a file called toast. I can call uh, the cat command and display that text. Okay, and I can see my file using ls. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use, um, we're going to put this file, we're going to add this file to IPFS. So to do that, we can run all the IPFS commands start with IPFS. And so there's an add command, I would say IPFS add, and then I would need to have the, the name of the file and the path to the file that I want to add. The file can be anywhere on your computer, but I've just kind of made it simple. So I'm going to add toast.txt. And so I can see it was successful because it, uh, IPFS returns and says added, and it gives me this great big long uh, letter thing and number thing, and then the file name. This num this this uh, uh, this is what's called a multi-hash. What IPFS did is it took that file and it hashed it. It created a hash, a multi-hash of this file, and 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 that is its address. IPFS is content addressed. And so this is its address, okay? And its address is based on its content. So what that means is that the content in toast is, is hello, hello. And so the, um, its, its address, or its hash, is based on that content. In fact, that's an interesting thing about um, IPFS. If you create the same file with hello, Hello, just like I did, with exactly the same letters that I have typed, you will get the same hash. And so your file will have the same address as my, my file. And that's because they are the same file if they have the same content. And so I'm gonna, we're going to kind of go through a couple examples here. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, let, let's do this. Now what we can do is we can do an IPFS cat. And we can copy this. I'll just paste that right down there. So when I say IPFS cat and that address, I should I would expect to see hello hello, which is the contents of that file. Just like I said when I say cat toast.txt. So another important thing is I, I can't use the file name to find to retrieve the file. I have to use the address. Again, they are not address like like normal files that you're used to working with. They are content addressed. The content has a hash that has to, that's the same no matter what, and we use the hash to get the file. And so this is the meaning. I'm trying to show you the meaning of what content addressed means. So let's do something else. Let's say echo. Let's, let's make a change to toast.txt on my local file system. So here I'm looking at my local file system called toast. There's a file called toast.txt. If I say echo, Let's say I made a, I made that mistake, and I really wanted to say hello world. That's really what I was trying to do. So I'm going to pipe that to toast. So I, if I do this, I have now made a change to toast. It's not the same. Toast.txt is a file name. Its content has changed to hello world. It was hello hello. So now let's do this. Let's say IPFS add toast again. So what you can see is I added the same file, toast.txt. The content changed, and looky here, the, the hash changed too. This hash is not the same as this. Even though the file name was exactly the same, 
the hashes are different between the first toast and the second toast. And the reason the hashes are different is because the content is different. And IPFS is content addressed. So now let's do this. We're going to go, go back and we're going to say echo. And we'll just say cat. Let's go ahead and cat this just as an example. Paste that right on there. Oops, I used that wrong. Oh, IPFS. I so I do an IPFS cat with that big long thing, and sure enough, I see the text, hello world. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we know that uh, um, if we just cat the local toast file, we know it says hello world. Let's change it back. Let's say echo, hello, hello. Oops. And pipe that to toast. So now what? I'm putting it back to the way it was because I want to show you something. Oops, what do I do? I'm going to put the O on there, excuse me. So now toast, if I cat toast, you'll see that toast says hello, hello now, which is the original file. Now I'm going to say IPFS add. And I'm going to say toast. This will be the third time I've added the toast to uh, IPFS. And so what you're going to see is that um, I, got, I, got, I have this uh, um, hash is the same as the hash before. The content is the same, so the hash is the same. You can see it ends a DXY, capital DXY, and previously um, it said it was DXY up here too. Okay. So once again, um, IPFS is content address. You put content in there, it's, it's addressed by its content. Um, and you could add toast a thousand times to IPFS, and actually, you're not really adding it. If it's already in there, it returns, it will return the hash, and it really doesn't have to add it, that file to there, if that hash is already in IPFS. <laughs> And so um, uh, they call this uh, deduplication. Your content is deduplicated dedupli um, <clears throat> just naturally. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you one more thing, uh, and then we'll call it a day here. Um, right now, we're working offline with IPFS. No one can, there's no network. You're not part of the IPFS network, uh, no one can access your files. Uh, if you want to share files, uh, you need to start the IPFS daemon. And to start the IPFS daemon, we would type D I P F S D A E N O N. And what that th this does, it starts up um, some services, and, and now all of a sudden your computer will be functioning on the IPFS network. And we could send somebody this this link to this content, and they would be able to, to go and pull it up from your computer. Okay, that's, uh, I think that's all for now. Um, we'll have some more lessons on IPFS uh, soon to come.